more peaceful scene would be hard to imagine. But about 60 miles northwest of Bismarck, highway travelers see a sign, Garrison Dam, with some figures that tell of intense construction activity. Length, 12,000 feet. Height, 210 feet. Drainage area, 179,500 square miles. Capacity, 23 million acre feet. And reservoir area, 390,000 acres. It must be a big job. It is a big job. An earthen dam being built across the Missouri on the Big Bend where it turns south toward Bismarck and Mandan. Garrison Dam will be the largest rolled fill earth embankment in the world with the main purposes of providing flood control, hydroelectric power, irrigation, and recreation. On the east side of the site is the town of Riverdale, built to house construction personnel and their families. Riverdale is a complete town with all conveniences, with modern homes, stores, schools, churches, hotels, and even parking lots. It's a permanent town that will become the tourist and vacation center of the Northwest Prairies when the dam is completed and creates its tremendous lake. A stone's throw from the town is a vantage point overlooking the site. Visitors can watch the ever-changing scene as the cut goes down and the earth fill builds up. But let's go down to the job for a closer look. There's a lot of power moving earth at a record-breaking speed. To build big dams, you need big contractors, and this is no exception. Here, Peter Kiewit Sons Company and Morrison Knudsen Company Incorporated joined forces and are moving the earth with no holds barred. Yes, it's a big job. The working season is from spring to fall, and the work goes on night and day so that as much as possible can be accomplished before winter sets in. Because Garrison was expected to be a four to five year job, it was decided to purchase a complete new fleet of tractors and power equipment. This meant over 40 19 and 20 ton hydraulic torque converter tractors, 12 motor graders, five big elevating loaders, and 70 25 yard dump wagons for hauling earth and rock. Also included were sheep's foot rollers, rippers, watering carts, movable service stations, and the hundreds of other items that make up a complete earth moving outfit. An outfit capable of working round the clock throughout the whole working season. To make sure that equipment would stand the gap, they set up a service and maintenance program to match the size of the operation. But more of that later. Let's look further at the big job. The earth fill to build the dam is gouged from the sides of the valley by a fleet of huge elevating loaders feeding into wagons of 25 yard capacity. They haul the dirt to the fill at top speed. Each loader is moved by two 20 ton tractors, one pushing and the other pulling. Teamwork is excellent because the tractors are torque converter driven and each can take up its share of the load automatically. And it is a load. Every loading unit is capable of handling a yard of earth a second and there are four to five units working on these cuts all the time. Figure it out for yourself. Five yards a second is over 300 yards a minute and there are a lot of minutes in a 20 hour day. Actual production of course doesn't equal such theoretical figures but it does run about 100,000 cubic yards per working day and that's a lot of earth. It has to be a lot because a total of almost 100 million yards of material are needed for the dam. On the downstream side of the dam, big wagons dump their heaping loads of good clean earth, free of sand and gravel, laying it in wide windrows. Bulldozers level off the windrows immediately because the fill must be made in layers not to exceed eight inches. This Siamese twin dozer is another world's largest, built right on the job by Peter Kiewit and Morrison Knudsen maintenance personnel. The blade on this giant is 20 feet wide and nearly four feet high and is pushed by two 20 ton tractors connected into one mighty power unit operated by one man. 
It levels off the fill in one pass. It's a big job. Then the sheep's foot rollers hauled by a 20-ton tractor get in their work by tamping the earth down to a solid compact mass. Then the ground is chiseled or raked to get out all the rocks. Every one must come out. They are piled by another tractor with a rock rake, then loaded in wagons by a loader equipped with a rock bucket. Moisture content is kept constant by huge power sprinklers that carry 10,000 gallons at a time. After sprinkling, the fill is disked, rolled again with sheep's foot rollers, and finally with a monster 50-ton roller that requires two 20-ton tractors. This still further compacts the earth until it's a solid mass. Speaking of packing, those 25-yard loads of earth riding to the fill on those huge tires do a pretty good job of packing it down. Here's a close-up of the track made by a loaded wagon on a well-watered fill. The tires are really big, and they're expensive too, about $3,000 each. So to avoid damage to tires, graders keep the fill, the haul road, and even the surfaces where the earth is being loaded as smooth, clean and level as possible. At every change in shifts, the complete haul road is graded in a few minutes by massing enough graders to cover it in one pass. Then they turn around and go over it again for good measure. Keeping everything as smooth as possible not only saves tires, but allows the high hauling speeds so essential to the work. The haul roads have a system of traffic control lights operated from towers overlooking the approaches to busy intersections. Obviously, the green light is always given to a fully loaded wagon which weighs up to 79 tons. Thus, accidents disastrous to men and machines are avoided. The fill on the west side of the river was complete when this picture was taken, but the mound doesn't look as big as it really is. Perhaps this simple diagram will give a better idea. The bottom of the dam is half a mile wide, and it's 210 feet up to the top. Why, that's as high as a 21-story building. The upstream side of the dam is built from impervious fill known as Fort Union clay. It's a gray-blue impervious soil that holds water like cement. When dry, this clay is very hard and sometimes comes to the fill in lumps that resemble rock. Chisel tooth rollers split up the hard lumps so that they could be compacted tightly again. There's a 1,250 foot blanket of this material stretching upstream from the toe of the dam to prevent seepage. On the upstream face of the dam, this clay will be faced with a heavy rock riprap to prevent erosion by large waves on the man-made lake. Here's a stockpile of coal from a scene that was discovered in the dam's foundation. Coal doesn't make a good dam, so it was completely removed. A lot of the material for the dam proper was furnished from the excavation for the diversion channel. The water will be directed through the 210-foot high reinforced concrete intake structure to the turbines in the powerhouse and discharged through the outlet channel. When up to full capacity, enough power will be generated to supply a city of more than a million people. Here's a 20-ton tractor and bulldozer leveling off the bank of the outlet channel. It's a two-to-one slope, but the torque converter drive allows the tractor to crawl up without slipping its tracks. Most of the leveling is done on the trip down. History is being made here along the Big Muddy as the earth fill moves up, the power plants get set, and the power lines reach out across the prairies. It's a job of big machines, big figures, and big men. Men with the know-how and the ability to carry through. To keep the wheels turning smoothly is another big job. Peter Kiewit's sons put this responsibility on their mechanical superintendent. He set up a program of preventive maintenance that really works. It has helped in no small degree in keeping on schedule. A repair and maintenance shop was laid out and built to fit the equipment and the project. A complete tool and parts room is right in the building with the repair sections. The electrical repair room keeps units for all lighting, starting, and ignition devices ready for quick exchange at all times. This quick exchange procedure is followed with many other parts. 
The industrial dealer for the territory cooperated by setting up a parts and service building right on the job with a supply of essential parts and the personnel to handle them. A low bed transport capable of hauling heavy tonnage was made available to transfer the heavy equipment quickly and to haul it to and from the shop for periodic service and repairs. The equipment parking lot located behind the shop was divided into two areas, dead line and ready line. Movable service check stations were built on skids so that they could be moved as the work locations changed. Here, minor repairs and adjustments could be made at any time. The men who do this preventive maintenance work were taught to take pride in their work, to do the job just a little better, and to be alert. And they are. Teamwork is evident all over the operation. A healthy push is given right a big job, and delays are expensive. Every machine that comes onto the job is marked with a PKMK number, which is also placed on a chart in the superintendent's office. The machine is serviced before starting out, and all its working history for the season is kept here. Oil changes, lube jobs, thousand-hour checkups, track and truck roller checkup. No guessing. It's all right in front of the superintendent or his assistants. One-thousand-hour checkups are indicated by an X. Truck and track roller lube by red squares, regular grease and oil by check marks. A fleet of service trucks are always on the job. Lubrication trucks with oils and grease for every different application. And repair trucks with tools and welders to do minor repairs on the spot. The fuel trucks supply the various machines at the end of each shift. Dust is cleaned away from tank openings, and the fuel nozzle is wiped carefully before placing in the tank. Fuel tank sumps are drained daily to eliminate the accumulation of water and sediment. Lubrication crews of three locate the tractors or graders to be serviced. They attach a do not start sign in plain sight to prevent accidental starting until the servicing is completed. Cooling system liquid is checked at every shift and added if necessary. Oil bath air cleaners are checked each shift and re-oiled whenever the cleaning oil shows dirty. To save time, spare clean cups are carried in the lubrication trucks and new oil is added to them. The replaced cups are then thoroughly cleaned and in turn become spares. Air free cleaners are also serviced each shift and under very dusty conditions several times per shift. This may mean some unscheduled stops, but it's worth it. Engine clutch shifter bearings are lubricated with a special high melting point grease as called for in the chart. Oil level in the transmissions, gear cases and tandems is checked and oil added whenever necessary. Motor graders are given the same careful attention. Instructions in the operator's manual are followed to the letter. These men know the importance of cleaning off each grease fitting and they do it religiously. Lift arms, front spindles and other points are greased daily. At 75 hours of operation, tractors and graders are taken to one of the conveniently located check stations for lubrication and inspection. Here again, the men know the importance of cleaning the grease plugs and of getting them back in cleanly. Truck wheels, idlers, and support rollers are equipped with such plugs. They get a supply of clean grease, and the old worn grease is forced out. Keep them rolling. It's a big job. At 200 hours, the machines are again returned to the field stations for further check and lubrication. This one is having the engine breather filter cleaned and replaced. Once a month, or every thousand hours of operation, all major units are brought to the shop for a thousand hour maintenance check. Before entering the shop, the whole machine is given a thorough steam cleaning. This makes inspection easier and speeds up any necessary repair work. The track release mechanism is tested for proper operation by placing a steel pin between the sprocket teeth and backing up the tractor until the pin holds the track away from the sprocket. The front and rear to take the weight of the tractor off the truck wheels. Then truck roller bearings are examined for bearing looseness and for seal leakage. Truck wheels are also checked for flange wear. Worn parts are exchanged for new or rebuilt ones. Track support rollers get the same treatment. 
Fan belts are tested for proper adjustment by pressing them inward and observing the amount of deflection. Correct adjustment is obtained by swinging the generator out on its hinge pins, checking belt deflection, and tightening the bolts after adjustment is made. Cooling system hoses are inspected and clamps tightened, and visual inspection is made of radiator, fan guard, and water pump. Muffler bolts are checked and tightened. It doesn't take much time, and it may save a lot of grief later. Saving grief is one of the big payoffs of a good preventive maintenance program. Fuel filters get particular attention on this shop check. The primary fuel filter element is drained, the old element removed, and a new one put in. After the system is bled, it's all set to go. The secondary filter is also removed, the old element discarded, and a new one inserted. Maintenance of correct control adjustment is just another of these little things that add up to better performance. Here, the mechanic uses a spring scale to determine the pounds of pull on the lever to engage the engine clutch. A tape measure is used to determine the amount of free play in the steering controls. Keeping the small things right makes for big performance and less wear. A quick check on the level in the oil reservoir of the hydraulic steering control makes sure that this vital part is operating properly. Brakes, too, are carefully checked for wear and adjustment. They must be good on a big job like this. The A-frame pivot bolts are checked and tightened if necessary. The simple job of tightening them now during a regular check is much easier than repairing a major breakdown which might result from neglect of an item like this. Even though the whole machine was steam cleaned before coming into the shop, air pressure is used to blast dirt and dust from around the valve cover before removing to check taffet and injector timing. This mechanic times all injectors and taffets alike and assures peak performance and smoother running engine. Checking batteries and connectors at regular periods assures long battery life and good engine starting performance. Attachments such as bulldozers, rippers, and cable control units, which are subject to heavy and abusive work, are thoroughly checked for defects or damage. Their controls are lubricated thoroughly, and brakes are tested and adjusted. The whole machine is then thoroughly lubricated, and it's back to the job again for another month's round at whatever part it is called upon to play. The operator knows that he doesn't have to baby the machine. It's ready for any part of the big job. Each working day at Garrison Dam shortens the time that the Big Muddy will be allowed to run free and wild. Engineers figure that as a flood control measure alone, the dam will hold as much water as normally goes by Omaha in a year. Yes, there's history being made here on the Missouri and North Dakota, where men and machines are moving Earth in almost unbelievable quantities to accomplish one of the greatest engineering feats of all time. And a large part of the success of this undertaking is due to the carefully planned and executed preventive maintenance program which keeps machines in top condition. In top condition for round-the-clock operation with endurance records falling like ten pins. The work is on schedule. It's just a matter of days until the water is turned into the diversion channel and the first power goes out over the lines. And before long, Garrison Dam will make the Big Muddy really settle down and go to work. It's all a part of the big job. <laughs>